day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Hey, everybody. This is part uh, E from our study that we did on the uh, 7th of June. And man, I tell you, I, it, it really uh, gave me some thoughts and a lot of things. And, and one, one of the things we're talking about is, is, is a paradigm shift that's occurring. You know, we, we, some people sit there and say, where are the big ministries speaking out? And, and on, the, on, the, on the big stage, on the, on the media, the, 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 to, to endorse the fact that all lives matter. Therefore, we got the Black Lives Matter because apparently some people are not give, taking heed to the lives of Black people and giving the police to operate with impunity. Now, point is, there are a lot of good, good, majority of the police officers are good people. I want you to know that, and I want to be able to say that, and I thank you for those that are good. I just want to understand that there's that, that element of bad people, bad blood, that the Bible said a little lump, a little leaven infects it or uh, causes the whole bread to, to go bad. And so, so we had to watch out for that. And we got to say we operate in love. And then for us, there's a paradigm shift. We sit there and say, where are the big church leaders and so forth? Well, you know what? I think the whole point is God is saying is you don't give a church, big, any big church leader or church leaders the, the, the stage of saying they're going to fix the problem. God fixing the problem. God is the one that's going to bring the deliverance. God is the one that's going to bring what we call justice. The Bible said that Bible, Jesus said, the, the scripture said that uh, God said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. So we need to understand God will repay. But we need to understand too is that what we see, because one of the things that uh, Bishop put down there, I thought it was very powerful, is do we hate ourselves? Is what, what, can we see something and, and don't recognize it in us? Do we not recognize we have hate? Whether you're black, red, white brown do do we do we is what we saw from what that man was doing on that person's neck was that an element of our own self as well do we have that in us that that what do you call it, propensity to do the same thing if given the opportunity or we're showing there's no we're much better than that you know what I believe most of us are, and I and I and I applaud the the ones that go on there peacefully and protesting because they operate in the love. They operate in standing for justice and truth. Truth is that God loves every last one of us, and the Bible talks about the fact is that you are even much more valuable than sparrows. And God said He takes note of them falling. He said, how much more I think about you? So he loves us. And there are changes happening and changes will happen. But I want you to say, good for people standing up. It's time for us not to be religious. See, this, this, is, this is where the church is to rise and shine. Just like in Isaiah, for the light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon us. This is the time for us to show that we don't operate in hate. We don't operate in fear, we operate in love. This is the time to sit there and say, we're not everybody's a thug. So I can't, I can't make that as the first impression or thought toward anybody of color or minority. My first impression is there's a child of God. And if it's not, I need to go preach the gospel to them so they can learn and receive the blessings of the Holy Spirit and God coming into them. That's what we need to do. You, you got you know we got one commission go preach the gospel the good news so you want you got a problem with thugs go ahead and preach to the thugs pray for the thugs huh let's not go with that acronym of thug the heck you give 
Bible said, be not deceived. God is not mocked. What some man soweth, that shall also reap. What are you sowing? And what is you need to kill in yourself? Or die in yourself for? And be a good man, a good woman of God. Love one another. Amen. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the video. And we'll see you next week. Amen. Hey, this was happening on 7 June. God bless. Bye-bye. I think the overarching still is the same thing that Jesus Christ did because we're the disciples of the Lord. So what he did, he gave us an example of how he wants us to live in this dispensation as a rule. But like with a GPS, they can give you general direction, but when that stops, uh, light is red, you gotta stop. So we can get updates as we go along the path. It's the maintaining the, the, I think the prayer thing, one thing I think we we did, historically we have taken prayer as being like some kind of magic potion where we don't have to do nothing. But that's not true. <laughs> Man, prayer is a, is, a, is a conversation in which we get direction. Thank and if you. we don't get no direction, <laughs> we don't get no direction. I mean, we, it, sometimes prayer calls you to do something. You know, you got to move, you got to do something. It, it's, a, it's a conversation. It's the exchange of information. No, but again, God is not telling us that he's going to magically make these things, un, 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 you know, open yeah. focus, you know, help us focus or whatever it is. But it actually is the place where God speaks to his people and gives them directions as to how they ought to perform. He could have told them to roll out from under that guy. He could have told him anything, but the question was, did he ask? And are Come we going to ask when the situation arises? Lord, what do you want me to do? Well, and, and don't forget that, but, but Brother Jasper got something to say, though. Well, it, it kind of goes along with uh, the lines of what Elder is saying. You know, in hindsight, what could we have done? What could have been done? Now, you know, we weren't there. But, you know, the uh, it makes me think, and, and this is just a thought, kind of like what Brother Jimmy was throwing it out, uh, when the folks who were witnessing this were responding in the flesh, it did not work. Nope. But if they had a responded by getting on their knees and praying and getting closer and closer and affecting that situation, it's very possible that those individuals' hearts may have been uh, 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 softened. Yep. And they may and have... Talking about their time, talking about at, that, at that moment? Um, yeah, at that moment, had to think oh, about it, because wow. what it is is, you know, when you, we all know oh. when you, if there's tension on both sides and people just keep pulling, Woo. you know, that guy refused to recognize for whatever reason why Woo. he did what he did. But yeah. what I'm saying is, is if everyone, because there were a lot of people that we don't see that were there that witnessed that, but it had those individuals came around, it's kind of like when we put hands on someone, yeah. we yeah. expect for uh, God to and whatever, however Ooh. God wants to do is His will. But Ooh. had they surrounded that scenario wow. on their knees, maybe not put. Okay, uh, I believe that something you know far different may have occurred, and that's kind of what I'm getting at. Is that we, you know, Elder is saying, you know, pray. You know, when you when you said prayer, it's very possible that if somebody had to say, look, boom, I'm bowing my knees right now, and and just let the Holy Spirit do His work in this situation. That he, uh, that that it may not have transpired the way that it did. You know, oh. we again, we got to go straight to God. We have to be careful because, you know, I know sometimes I find myself <laughs> using the, the scripture to, uh, uh, to 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 promote my opinion, wow. and then the, the Holy Spirit speaks to me, wow. right? But but yeah yeah, you know, we this this opportunity that is yeah. that is coming on us is um, a phenomenal one but I, that's what i want to say elder and to jimmy because uh you know you you, you both were bringing up something it just kept coming to me yeah i think that that's something that could have been done different had they just prayed if, if all think about it all those people that drove by got out of their vehicles and prayed those individuals that had the that had the cell phone you could have you could have kept that cell phone on but had you prayed you know have you done all those things and um um uh and right now i mean right now uh, we pray. You know what? I, I, and I appreciate that, and that's a great perspective. And who knows? But let's just say that's what you've been doing for 400 years, and he still ain't got his foot off your neck. Then what? Oh, uh, but you, you know, Jimmy, the thing is that there has been some progress made. Um, man, we have literally. I mean, we just the guy, the black, just left the White House, and he did an excellent job as far as politics is concerned. Yeah. So we have seen some progression, but what we saw was regression on our part in the sense that we have not followed the God. When they said that this guy called upon his mom before he died, 
they said that he asked the cop to take his foot, his knee off of his neck before he died. It was his conversation with the Lord. And then I know that sounds, that's harsh coming from me. It may be something that I, someone would scorn what I just said, but we got to stop calling on the wrong people Woo! to resolve our issues. We need to call Woo! on God, man. I mean, forget this. If, if God be for you, who can be against you? Yeah. God is not here to glorify me or anybody else. If, if Chris had came and saved me that day, Chris would have got get saved that guy, he would have got the glory. <laughs> it's only God is involved in things where he's going to get some glory out of it. I'm sorry to say that, but he's selfish like that. He ain't sharing his glory with nobody. It's it, no flesh is glory in his presence. So when we submit ourselves to him and put our lives in his hand and wow. dedicate ourselves to operating in such a manner that he's going to get the glory out of it, I don't think he's going to walk away from that looking bad. Wow. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Maybe we sacrifice, but we're going to get sacrificed because it's going to bring glory to him. The Hebrew boy said, hey, you know what? We know he can deliver us even if he don't. And we ain't going to serve you regardless of what he do because we're going to serve him. Yeah. And we got to go that route. We got these guys have had the foot around neck. You're right. Four, 400 years. You get used to doing that. You got where you at because you were doing it. Why would you give it up? Their mm -hmm. hearts ain't going to change because we're asking them to have mercy on us. I think it's a waste of time. We got to go to God. We have to go to the Lord if we're going to get this issue resolved without going fist to cuff and becoming as corrupted as they are. Because in order to kill a murderer, you got to be a murderer. Wow. And look in here. order for us to look stop doing that, they are not get corrupted like that. We got to use another tactic. So what did Jesus say? He said, be of good cheer. In this world, you have had tribulation. You have tribulation. But be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. And that perplexed me because they had crucified him. And I thought, how did he overcome the world if they killed him? I said, well, they didn't change his heart. Mm -hmm. And because they weren't able to change his heart, look at us. Mm -hmm. We get our heart changed by a man that the world tried to destroy. And that's the same thing that the, the devil is trying to do with us. He's trying to mm -hmm. work his way inside of us, Chris. I've been there, man. I am there. And mm -hmm. I had to fight him there every day. He tried to get inside of you and make you as hellish as the folk that you hate. Mm -hmm. Let me just say this. I think in my heart that black people as a whole are crying out for justice, not revenge. Well, thank God. We're crying thank, out for justice. Thank, thank, thank God we're not crying out for revenge. That we, we're, we're, we're not looking for revenge. Right. We're only looking for justice. But we're seeking justice from the wrong people. Why would we go to Satan and ask him to treat us right? We're going to get justice from God. Only, only the Lord can deliver us from the hell of this, I mean, that's infected these guys. If we look at their behavior, they seem like they're demon possessed. I, I, don't, I don't think it's fair to say that we're not looking for justice from God. I do think there's a loud cry out and has been a cry out to God for justice. I, I do. I do. Now, I'm not saying, you know, because there's people that stand on both sides of the issue, of course. But I do think that uh, we've cried out to God. For justice. Hey, I got it. I got an input. I got an input too. Yeah. Now check this out. Um, you know, Stephen, the first martyr, he said very much what Jesus said on the cross. Forgive Amen, him. Man. Woo! Think about this. Take based on what Jimmy brought up and what Elder is saying. Had George Floyd said this instead of calling for his mother, he called for Jesus, and then said, while that man had his knee on his neck, forgive them. For well, they know not what they do. Do you know what a difference wow. in the spirit world that that would have made possibly for for all of us? Wow. And see, that's that's kind of that's kind of what I see. See, I don't. I think what happens is it's kind of like a bit of an illusion. Hmm. Satan has us looking one way, when really we need to be looking elsewhere. In spite of what we might be seeing with our eyes. Right. And. And I can't, I swear, man, if, if, if George Floyd had said, uh, uh, man, I don't know if I could have handled it. But if he had said that, cried out in Jesus' name and then Woo! said something like that, Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do. And Woo! he died anyway. Yes, sir. Brother, Woo! brother, you see what I'm getting at? Yeah. So, you know, we're, 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 well, I think we're doing what we need to be doing and asking these questions. And that's why, you know, these moments and praise God, because he's getting the glory for this. Yeah. Um, but, 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 but re looking at it because each time, you know, even though this shirt says rise up and vote, but each time what happens is, is the flesh wants to rise up. I mean, yeah. each one of us, man, I looked at each one of you guys, man. I'm like, man, these are some bad dudes in their days, right? Man. But that is not where we need to come from. That humility, that yielding to the spirit. And I think what it does is 
is it tells us something altogether different from how we would normally do. And again, that's why I think, and when Jesus was in the, again, he was tempted like all of us, yeah. right? Amen. So when he Amen. saw injustice, when he saw crime, when he saw depravity, I mean, I think his, his flesh, man, he, he wanted to rise up and take care of business. But he yeah. prayed and he prayed and he was in constant communion. He was in constant fellowship with God the Father. And he only said what God wanted him Woo! to say. He only did what God wanted him to do. That is where we got to be. You said and, and, and the example that was set forth was Christ on the cross. Woo! Father, forgive me for no, 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 not what they do. It was, it was, it was uh, the young man, uh, uh, Stephen, when he was being stoned, don't charge this sin to their account. Wow. The graduation ceremony, literally, if we're going to, you know, magna cum laude or whatever it's called, yeah. <laughs> super cum laude, whatever you can get, is when you can pray for some clown that's killing you. Woo. When you can literally intercede on behalf of a man that's about to take you out because Woo. you know his immortal soul is in danger. See, that young man's name isn't called much. That cop's name isn't called much. But we know Floyd finished with this. Everybody's got to go through this wow. process. Yeah. Everybody's going to leave here some kind of way or another. Preach, preach. The issue becomes Woo. where you going when you leave him. Are you going to die in, in, in right standing with God or are you going to die and bust here wide open? Wow. At this state, it appears as though both our president and that young man that had his neck, his, his, I mean, his knee on that guy's neck, need Jesus really badly. And that is what needs to be preached to these lost souls that are here. 400 yeah. years of hell? Your Woo. heart is still corrupted after 400 years of doing people evil? You Woo. still want to go back to where you were? Hell, you gonna die and bust hell wild. That, that, that's just the reality of it. But we don't address it that way. We don't call them into spiritual submission or, or, or accountability. We all leaving this planet. The slave owners dead. The slaves are dead. <laughs> you know, the north, the generals in the north and the south, all of them dead. What they at? So we have the insight. We have the understanding. We have the knowledge. Now we gotta submit to what we know and ask God to empower us. Because, amen, man, we. But that brother, yeah. if he knew the Lord, he's in the presence of God. Amen. But where's that white boy going that, 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 that let the devil use him to open that door for him to exit? Well, he still he alive, can still go. He can still, still go. Yeah, he's still he can, that's the thing. That's what yeah. we, that's where, you know, revenge comes in and what we want. He can still get there because yeah. even though that that happened, think about Paul now. Yes, sir. Oh, oh, man. Come on. Come on now. That's hey, he was the chief. He was ended up dying for the same Jesus you tried. <laughs> Amen. And so th th this can happen. And that's what I'm saying. When we see these things with our fleshly eyes and we come back that way, it, I, I, it, it always comes back to me. You got to relook at this. Look at it from the, from the spirit. And, wow. uh, and it is, it's not opposite of what I feel. It's totally out. It's, it's, it's beyond what I feel. Does that make sense? Yeah. When I get a revelation from God, it's beyond what I could, in a, in a thousand generations, I couldn't have thought of what the Spirit tells me. Amen, man. Yes, sir. Praise now, God. <laughs> what, what, this, this is for Brother Jimmy, because this, this, this what Jimmy, me and you want to hear the thing, same thing or say Ooh. the same thing. Because, uh, like I keep saying, uh, David was divinely inspired when he slayed Goliath, too, now. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, like you said, you need some more oysters too. I, th I think we are. I think we have to see ourselves as such because if we don't embrace that portion of our being, we're cowardly going to a situation. The Lord never told us to cower from anything. As a matter of fact, it said the fearful and unbelieving had their part in the lake of fire, that, I mean, the lake that burned with fire and brimstone. <laughs> to speak the truth, to stand in the presence of an everlasting God, an ever I mean, an eternal God, an all powerful God. <laughs>